she also had a real kind of penchant for thinking that she might be able to be famous someday. Now, every American kid in the world understands that. She's memorable, I think, because of that writing, but also because she was just, in many ways, a smart-mouthed, kind of obnoxious, probably very difficult to live with kid. That bumped up against how great the writing is, is what makes the theater experience really something, because she was a full-out, loud, opinionated, way beyond her years, um, just kind of kick-ass kid. And that's what's fun to be in the room with when you're seeing it performed. Then against that, the fact that we know what happens to her, I think makes the experience pretty boomy in the room. The sad news about the relevance is that human hatred seems to have no end. It has manifestations every day in our lives. Um, through the course of the rehearsal period, um, we heard and talked a lot about the news um, in Ivory Coast about genocide beginning in that country. Um, we experienced the um, shooting of Gabby Giffords and how hate, no doubt, in some way manifested that. Um, Sadly, human hate is not going to stop. Human uh, identification of the other, whether that other is a different race or a different um, religion or a different culture or a different way of life, um, is always going to be true. Sadly, it seems to be something that humanity can't cure itself of. However, one of the things we've learned through the student matinee post show discussions is that the Holocaust is being forgotten. Literally, kids do not understand what happened. Even kids who knew Anne Frank was a real historic character were shocked that she dies, did not understand that she is a victim of the Holocaust. But they're not being taught this. They don't grow up with parents who served in the war or experienced the war in some way, or grandparents who did. Storytelling stops after a certain point generationally about things. And I in no way feel like the Holocaust is the main genocide story we should understand. It is probably the main, uh, the main genocide story of the 20th century. But we're unfortunately making new genocide stories as human beings all the time. That's horrific, but true. This is one that, in dramatizing this story, can give people a very visceral experience because it is a real girl. It did happen to her. She happened to write this amazing legacy about it. So there's a bunch of coincidental things that amount to a pretty big piece of storytelling. There's lots of other diaries from World War II. Lots of them. I've read a bunch of them. We've done other plays about them. This one continues to have the biggest impact in the world, I think mostly because it's been translated into 50 languages and it, it just has tremendous worldwide impact. I'm glad that we can do something to get this story back, particularly into the minds of kids, because of course you hope that theater from time to time to have, can have some sociological impact, can cause somebody to say, maybe I should examine why I hate this person. Maybe I should think twice before I use a pejorative term that types somebody. Um, just because they're not like me and I don't understand how they're different. That's the window that you go for. I mean, ultimately what we're trying to do is make great theater. That's what we're trying to do. But in a selection of a piece like this, we're trying to make great theater that will linger with people, that will change some minds and hearts, that will open some doors for particularly kids who may not know very much about this story to remember because it is important to human progress that we not forget a genocide that took six million people out.
maybe we can learn a little bit.